Today I'm going to show you how I made my needle book using my new Prim Fabric collection. I used 28 different one and a half inch squares for the outside and I used my Be Cute lace as well. I have one in colors and one in the naturals and I decided to use natural for this one. I used a little piece of the lace in the top so that I could make a loop to hang an enamel charm. I like how the charm looks hanging over the front of the needle book. Okay, let's talk about what I put in the pockets on the inside. So I put a pair of my stork scissors in here, but before I put them in a needle book or in a bag, I always put point protectors on the end so they don't poke any holes. I also use a few more pieces of my Be Cute lace to go on the pages of the needle book. On the inside, there's even more room for pins and needles. And I have six different kinds of needles and they're all color coded. And where I place the needles in this book is on the lace and in the appliques that I did, like the star and the heart. And in the remaining spots, I placed my pretty pins. And then just for fun, I added some cute little buttons. Now for the appliques, I used my So Simple Shapes. The heart is C8 from my fruit salad set and the star is F14 from the Autumn Love set. In this back pocket, I have a thing of beeswax and a needle case, but you could also put a measuring tape in there. I also attached my prim needle minder to the back pocket as well. Okay, let me tell you everything that you need to get started. First, you'll need to piece your 28 squares together and sew them in a setting of four by seven. I use a quarter inch seam allowance and I press my seams open. I use my seam roller as I'm sewing them together and then a hot iron at the end to press them nice and flat. Now at this point, my patchwork section measures four and a half by seven and a half, and I cut a piece of thin batting five and a half by eight and a half. For each pocket, I'll need a five inch square, and then I'll need two pieces of sewing interfacing cut two and a half by five. And for the lining of the needle book, I cut a piece five and a half by eight and a half. For the inside page of the needle book, I use wool and I cut it three and a half by six and a half. For the little lace piece at the top, I cut it two inches wide. And for the ties, I cut it 24 inches long. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine. The first step is the quilting. Now don't worry that there isn't a piece of backing fabric behind the batting. I just am simply using the batting and the patchwork piece. No need for marking because I'm just going to quilt an eighth of an inch on each side of each seam. When machine quilting, I always use a walking foot and it really helps with all of those layers. There's a little notch on the inside of my walking foot so that I can see where an eighth of an inch is. I start in the center and quilt out from both sides. I don't use pins because the piece is so small, but you could if you wanted. I quilted all of the short seams first, and then I finished up by quilting the long seams. After that, I quilted all around the edges of the patchwork. Okay, quilting is completed. That's what the back looks like, and now it's time to trim off the excess. Now when you're trimming this up, it'll be four and a half by seven and a half. While trimming, use the lines of the ruler to make sure that it's squared up on the corners. Next, you'll want to grab your two inch piece of lace, fold it in half with the raw edges on the top and just top stitch on the edge a little bit just so that that's in place when you sew together. Then take your pocket squares and press them in half with wrong sides together. And the two and a half by five inch interfacing you want to put on the inside. And then we're going to take it over to the machine and top stitch that edge where it's folded. I like to use a piece of the interfacing in the pockets because I just feel that it adds stability. Okay, after top stitching, now we're gonna layer the pieces to sew the needlebook together. 
lay the pockets on the lining piece like this with the fold on the inside and then center the patchwork on top with right sides down. Place a few pins in. As you can see, the lining and the pockets are larger than the patchwork. The reason I do that is because I don't like the way they shift sometimes even with a walking foot and so I like to just make the back larger and then I can trim it after. I keep my needle in the needle down position and I think that really helps especially when I get to the corners. I need to leave an opening so I can turn right side out. I leave the opening between the two pockets and I backstitch when I stop and start. Now I can go ahead and trim off the excess. And keep in mind, I haven't trimmed off any of the patchwork. It's still four and a half by seven and a half. I also like to trim the corners off a little bit just so that it will reduce some bulk. Okay, that's the last step before turning right side out. I like to use a gentle hand while turning and I usually do one side at a time. I shape it as best as I can with my fingers and then I grab a crochet hook because of its rounded edge and it's not too pointy to kind of push those corners out. Now I'm going to hand stitch this opening closed but first I'm going to press. Kind of gets a little wrinkly while you're turning. Now you can use a wonder clip or I usually use clothespins because I've used those forever to just clip it together so that you can prepare it for the hand stitching. Here I'm using 80 weight thread because that's what I've got right here on hand so I'll use two strands. Uh, 50 weight I might just use one and I'll just knot it at the end. The first thing I do is hide the knot within the fold. And then I just go ahead and do a whip stitch and then I make sure to knot at the end. Now of course you could make this needle book with just a four and a half by seven and a half inch piece of fabric and go ahead and quilt it, but I really like how the patchwork looks. Now here's how I do the tie. I take my 24 inch piece of lace, fold it in half, find the center of the needle book, and simply stitch it on. Now it's time to put the wool page in there. So what you're going to do with that is you just do a center seam all the way down in the center of the patchwork, making sure that your ties are out of the way. I just wanted to show you that you can embellish your page before or after you put it in the book. Now I'm continuing to use my walking foot because of all the layers and I just use it to center on that line of patchwork. I backstitch when I start and when I stop on each end and I just do a straight line all the way down. Now you could stop there if you wanted with just the one seam is strong enough, but I like to do more seams on mine because I like to do it like a book binding and do several seams and that way it fits my spool of thread in. I really like the way it makes the book deeper and the thread fits in there so snug. I end up doing seven seams total, three on each side of the center. And they're about an eighth of an inch apart. Now it's time to put the charm in that little loop of lace. I have several different charms that you could use. This is the Prim Village charm and I just love it. Now, if you've never done my So Simple Shapes applique method, then I'll go ahead and leave a few links for you in the description of this video. Okay, a little bit about my cute little buttons. 
I sew them on using this cotton crochet thread because it matches the wool. And then to hide the knots, I go ahead and put the lace on the other side and then the lace adds cuteness as well. I don't want the edges of my lace to fray and so I use this Sue glue or fray check for the edges. I have several sets of cute little buttons. For this one, I used my Granny Chic set. It matches the colors in prim perfectly. I sure hope you've enjoyed watching me make this little needle book. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel so that you can see more tutorials.